Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Good Friday. I hope you're all enjoying your day. Thank you for joining me to wrap up the week with another broadcast here on 412 Productions. Jump into chat wherever you're watching. We'll do our little pre-show roll call. Uh, and then at the top of the four o'clock hour, we'll get this party officially started. Light Our Souls, Q Boys, and Lucy Anders all checking in on D Live in the Mosh Pit. Good to see you guys over there. Uh, shout out to our friends on Rumble. We got UK Patriot 55 checking in from abroad. We got Bales in the house too. Good to see you, Bales. Left Maryland. And of course, Joe Elaine modding the chat, keeping things super comfy over there. Thank you, Joe. Shout out to the Twitter, Cloud Hub, Odyssey, YouTube uh viewers out there appreciate you guys all tuning in and of course we are in the comfy bunker pilled.net the best and only place to watch the entirety of our broadcast today we do go exclusively over to pilled.net uh at the top of the five o'clock hour for the second hour of the show that is only available on pilled.net if you're over there, jump in to chat so I can say hi. And uh, yeah, let's get this going here. Floyd, due diligence in there first. Great to see you. Delia, great to have you back. Hope your uh, your trip went well. We got D. Richard out there. Good to see you, D. Floyd with a fajita Friday cookie. Thank you for that, Floyd. Sounds delicious. H.L. Paco in the house. Lance Lightspear, good to see you. Patriot714 out there too. Joe Elaine modding this chat as well. Again, Joe, thank you so much for all your hard work and dedication. Ken Chris, what's up, Ken Chris? Good to see you. R. Harrell. And we got uh, Fazic out there. Good afternoon, Mr. Gerardo. Roy Stones and Bones checking in from the West Coast. What's up, Roy? Pip's mom from over in Wales, UK. Shout out again to all of our patriots abroad. Appreciate you all tuning in so much. Sherry Pittsburgh says, good Friday with a cookie. Thank you. Sherry, I appreciate that, and thank you for being here, repping the 412. Let's go. We got Wooderson79. Good to see you out there. Bender 2 and Q1. Clover Lily, Don Ritchie 17 Boss, what's up, guys? Great to see you all. Boys Blanc89, great to see you, and thank you so much for the cookie. I appreciate that. Uh, Tweety52 out there. And Cynthia, what's up? Good to see both of you. Christine in Texas, welcome. Truth Teller 101, welcome. Trump Red Pill, great to see you. And uh, let's see, who else? Tesla Dove, what's up, Tesla Dove? Uh, Eagle Freedom, Snow Bunny 68, Lizzie B, what's up, all you guys? Good to be with you all. Molon Labe, my brother out in south africa checking in as well great to see you kyman how are you mike q kelly welcome mad joker laura why repping the four one two let's go laura flawless in the usa great to see you mix picks checking in as well good to see you mix picks uh cern starting up on eclipse day just a coincidence yeah i saw that I saw that. I don't know anything about that whole cern situation a lot, some people make a big deal of it Others don't pay much attention. I don't. I don't know what implications their work really has. I'm not smart enough to understand. For being just completely honest about it, Sig, your Dragon Slayer, great to see you. Packers four twelve, Lyle, Jenny, happy Friday. Great to see both of you guys out there. We got Draws sixty four in the house. Duppy, Tesla Dove, Filter Dog one. What's up, fam? Good to see you all out there. Thank you all for tuning in, wrapping up your week with us here today. We'll pop back over to Rumble for a second. We'll see. I see a Liberty's Great Awakening. Good to see you. PNW Sasquatch over there as well. UFO Pirate 17. Good to see you. And we got where we go one, we go all GTG in the house. Crimson and Corey Chemo all popping in over on D Live. Good to see you guys all over. Hit that thumbs up button and share that. Or not on D Live, that's on Rumble. Hit that thumbs up button and share the link for us over there. Woke and Walk, Wisconsin, Idaho Vet. 
in the house as well. Woken Walk took this up with 147 gold pills. It says, God bless Adel and the Foxhole fam. Pinata sent me. Shout out to Drunk Pinata and all you Pinata holics piling on in to the chat. I hope the uh, the abuse wasn't too bad over there today. Uh, let's see. A from PA, coloring some eggs. Good to see you. And uh, Max and on says, can you text me the Zoom ID real quick? Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, I'll do that as soon as I start playing the intro here in a second. Um, all right. Dread Quarters. Good to see you. All right, everybody. Well, thank you guys for being here. Tuning in for the uh, Friday broadcast. We'll be right back in just a few moments. We will make America strong again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And yes, together, we will make America great again. United doing what we gotta do to win Be addicted, the MSM and now we're moving in And once we take over, we won't ever move again Where we go on, we go all I say you would cry No, we won't run, we won't fall We're right by your side The demons have taken hold But none of us will abide Stand strong as damn bold That's how we'll survive 412 is the production Monday through Friday Deplorable discussions We're making it hard for the two states to function Every time they switch up the narrative We debunk it out of zero is the power that's controlling the plight With all your patriots behind them Cause we're all in this fight So many rhymes for so long But we're giving them sight Trapped in the world of darkness But we're bringing them light You may even find yourself in a different life A lot of us have And honestly that's perfectly fine Because exactly where you are at this moment in life Is where you're supposed to be at this moment in time it's all by the sign, the patriots are holding the line They must have lost theirs, thinking they're controlling our minds So many trapped in mental prisons don't know they can find They're just slaves in the system to the roles are assigned That's sad, the good news is that we're waking them up They have monopolies on minds, but we're breaking them up Everything you thought was news, they were making it up When we ascend, all the tyrants won't be making the cut Let them all burn in the hellscape to create We the people, already mapped out our escape We hold each other by the hand as we all elevate And go to a different place, they can never get Chase. When I look into the future, I can see that it's bright When this history is written, they will see that we're right We want our own community and the circle is tight But I expand the circle with every word that I write The pen is sharper than the sword when you wield it with might Why do you think they try to kick us off all the sights? These people hate America, punish us out of spite We are the beacons of hope in the darkness of night So let's go, strap in, yeah, get ready for the ride Watch the water, we're witnessing the turning of the tide Feel the passion and the fire that you got burning inside Take the narrative that feeding you and Turn it to the side, we're alerted to the lies We're preaching with the truth, we know the plan they devised They're invading the youth, now we're only sending fires To start raising our boots, these demons all weaponized Now we're raising our troops, now we're raising the roof And sounding the alarm, remember that it's always darkest before the dawn light It's a game of chess, they wanna use you as a pawn You're only useful, until you're not useful then you're gone But not us, we're on the right team where we belong Everybody is invited, so can follow along We refuse to say things are right, knowing they're wrong Adam Nero, take the mic and take flight to the song And now, straight from the Steel City, it's your host, 412 Adel Nero Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Friday. Happy Good Friday. Thank you guys for uh, spending your Friday afternoon with us here on 412 Productions. It is March 29th, 2024. Got a great panel for you guys today. We've got Maxinon of the Rise Attire Tribe and Drunk Pinata, my OG riding shotgun. Tian Homesteader is sitting today's show out. Uh, he's got some stuff going on, uh, so he won't be able to make it. But uh, the the three of us will will handle our business here today. Uh, Max, how you been? It's it's been a while. Oh, I know it's been too long. I'm I'm glad to be back joining the panel. Um, we were just 
saying we're going to try to figure out an, another day or time or something to do uh, more regular appearances. But and we were also saying before the show that I have been busy for like the last two hours, so I haven't seen any news. And the way things are going lately, we could like be at war by now. Like for all I know, a ship's crashed into uh, the World Trade Center. Oh, wait, uh, planes. <laughs> I mean, anything could have happened in the last uh, couple hours. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. There's never a dull moment, never any lack of uh, of happenings to cover. So I'm really glad to be part of this discussion because you know, me and Rise can only go back and forth about these things so many times. We got to open it up to the wider conversation. And um, second half, we got some exciting new stuff to share with the audience. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Right on. Great to have you, Max. And then, of course, we got Mr. Drunk Pinata, who we've only got Drunk Pinata for about 20 minutes here today. So Pinata, great to have you aboard, man. I know you got some stuff you want to cover. So take it away. Well, you wouldn't be surprised what the current narrative is, is um, Russia is influencing your your most uh, all your thoughts that you you don't you don't actually have your own autonomy. I don't know if you guys knew that everything that you're doing, if you don't agree with the narrative, you're just you're just uh, parroting what the Kremlin wants you to say. So how would you know? Get out of my head, Putin. So the Russian bots are back. They've been bringing that up. They're uh, they're trying to gaslight about uh, the 2020 or 2016 uh, Russian influence type. They've been doing that for the past few days, saying that oh uh, they definitely hacked the DNC. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. We know that. Even the people that did the investigation into that, the company CrowdStrike, they even said that they couldn't prove that. Then you have desperate uh, desperate people trying to ramp up and say that there's a, a increase in the threat environment. And I think Jenna Griswold felt a little left out now that uh, she's out of the spotlight. So she decided to, uh, and, and I'm surmising, invent a 600% increase, she says, in death threats in order for her to go on TV and gather sympathy while this ju other judge is saying, "I my daughter has been threatened. No, somebody said something politically in his political speech. So then you had a federal judge also come on, currently sentencing people for January 6th and has done so and potentially could involve any of these cases going on TV on CNN and giving his political opinion, which is extremely rare as meaning that it should not happen and is extremely unethical to the point where if anyone had been sentenced by that judge on appeal, they sh they can bring that in, and that would be a very valid criticism against any sentencing for that judge to have that political opinion uh, like that. So that would be interesting. But then you have this desperation here. And I like – you guys know I like doing my show live. I don't really watch a lot of the stuff ahead of time. I just know what the sources are and who's who's on it or you know who's, who's – what the clip's about in general. And right before this – the, right before we got to this point, she was saying about, oh, my gosh, we've lost so many election workers. We've lost all this and that. And I go, you know, 600 percent. You haven't been in the news in, in like a month and a half. Like who who's upset? We we won our case against you in the Supreme Court. Who's upset? And I'm thinking, I don't think anyone's calling in. There's no evidence for this. And then I get and then, then I go, you know what? I bet that. uh she is going to claim that they're not taking this seriously enough. And then, of course, what does she do? And why would why would she do that? Because she's trying to shame them into providing her more security, more relevance, more like just in general. She's just I think she she's a, an attention whore because that's probably the only thing she can probably get, even if she was a whore. Was, uh, just <laughs> anyway, here you go. Threats have a, a toll on election workers. And I'll tell you, they have a toll on the people who work in my office. They see the threats. They also hear them as folks call into our phone lines. Yeah. They're screamed at. These are civil servants who are trying to serve Coloradans uh, and uphold our democracy. That is the entire purpose of the threats. Try to scare people out of their yeah. jobs. I won't be intimidated. But with that said, state and federal officials need to take this more serious. There are so many times when secretaries of state like me are told the threats against us are not serious and we do not deserve adequate security. 
Officials need to take this seriously. So does the DOJ Special Task Force on Election Threats or, or Threats to Election Officials, which has only prosecuted 20 cases since 2021. Wow. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. So you see, so she's like, they've only taken action. Good. If those were actionable, they were actionable. But they're saying they're getting thousands of, of threats. And she says that only 21 have been actionable. So if you do the math on this, we're talking a very, 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 very small percentage. Half a percent. Of what, of, of what they say they're getting versus what they've prosecuted. Wow. Wow. I don't I don't buy it. I'm not buying thousands of threats, Pinata. I just I I'm, I'm not either. That's what I'm saying. So I it I find it, it so we've been asking these people, show us some examples, show us this proof of, of this. And you know, obviously we condemn that. We don't agree with that or uh, condone that whatsoever. And so this is uh, for me another it's sort of like a confirmation in and of itself where she is so upset that they're not taking it seriously because it's not serious what they're what the people are doing. They're it's not actionable. It's criticism, and there's she's treating criticism as as threats, and this is for me that's kind of proof, and at least in this one case, in this one case, I don't know what's going on in in the Chuckin thing or the Fannie Willis thing or whatever, you know, any of the other different cases. But if I mean she has the, the kind of personality that would be like this, you know, especially with the, more of a victim complex uh, than any of them. I mean, they all kind of have that a little bit, but the most of, out of the group, I would say, would be be her so i think she's me, tied I, with I katie hobbs this, yeah well, that's well she's been kind of out of it for a little while we haven't really heard much from that yeah the last thing yeah. i heard from katie hobbs was that she vetoed a border security bill and claimed that what for whatever reason it wasn't going to make the border safer but yeah no i did, also didn't realize how ugly she is that that was like her eyebrows, man, are just like all just coming together into one angry, like bushel of of anger on her. Ugh, these people are, are the worst. They're just the worst. Yeah, she's definitely got that um, that crazy like resting liberal face. I don't know how else to say it, but it's just you can see the unhinged, um, unstable nature of their energy. Just looking at the the way their their faces for sure. Um, Anything else you have for us to get us started here today, Pinata? No, I think that pretty much covers it. Right on. All right. Well, let me go ahead. We'll take care of a couple of sponsors, and then we'll jump in, jump into some of the the stuff that I grabbed uh, for today's show. Uh, first is Earth Garden Botanicals. We love Earth Garden, amazing company up in Montana, run by an amazing woman named Jolene, who's an Earth Garden or who's an <laughs> an herbalist. And uh, a health coach, she's absolutely uh, an absolute genius when it comes to making these wellness products like the white pine needle extract, the concentrate version of the pine needle tea. Really great for detoxing your body. The CBD products are amazing as well, whether it's the CBD oil tinctures, CBD oil for pets, the Delta 8 r and nighttime gummies to help you sleep, or the Arnica salve for your sore joints and muscles, which comes with or without CBD infused. A bunch of amazing products there. All the ingredients for the CBD products are locally and organically grown on Montana farms. Uh, then you have your fire cider, really good for clearing your sinuses this time of year with allergies uh, bothering people. It's going to be really good to have in the house uh, for some quick relief if you're feeling stuffed up. Uh, elderberry tonic is really good for your immune system. Check out the teas. I mentioned the sunshine and pine needle tea. There's a few other uh, tea blends to, to check out if you're a tea drinker. And of course, the critter juice, the all natural insect repellent. The stuff is incredible. Uh, it works amazing. It doesn't smell bad. It don't feel it on your skin after you apply it. It just, it, you put it on, you forget you're wearing it. Other than the fact that you realize you're not getting bit or bothered. Uh, promo code 412 gets you 10% off everything in the store here. So go to earthgardenbotanicals.com. Use promo code 412. Get that discount, load up a cart, and you'll be very, very happy that you did. Our other sponsor today is Diamond Soap Co. DiamondSoapCo.com, America first as it gets, veteran and family owned and operated. Harold and Laura have been married over 33 years. They're in, uh, Air Force Intel vets, and they make all of their soaps and body butters handmade here in the United States, also using all organic, all natural ingredients, so top-notch 
product from top notch people. Uh, I love I love their products, guys. I, you guys know how much I love the Kentucky Bourbon and Bonfire Soap. I love the Cedar Amber, the Island Escape, uh, the the Green Tea Cucumber. It, all all of them that I've tried have been fantastic. Uh, so go go check out uh, DiamondSoapCo.com. Load up some soaps, some body butters. You, there's uh, scents, aromas for everybody. Whether you like the the stuff like the Bonfire and Kentucky Bourbon, like I do, or you're more into the floral scents like Plumeria or uh, Vi- Night Violet, uh, Rose, Lavender, there, there's something there for everybody. Again, promo code 412 gets you 17% off, and it's a great way to support the parallel economy. Instead of buying your soap from Procter & Gamble or Johnson & Johnson or just going to your you know drugstore or Walmart and, and picking some up, it's a great opportunity to support America First Small Business, a family and veteran owned and operated small business that shares your values. So go to diamondsoapcode.com, promo code again, 412 for 17% off your order. So those are our sponsors today, amazing sponsors. Um, and we really, really appreciate all that they bring to the table. And I appreciate you guys out there who continue to support them. Uh, if you haven't already hit that red pill button on pill.net, please go ahead and smash that now. Also, if you haven't reposted the show yet, please repost the show, share the link, and help us continue to grow. And uh, yeah, let's get into some of the news I have pulled aside here. Uh, here's a fl- full list of names listed in Diddy's sex trafficking lawsuit. So the Gateway Pundit reported on Monday that Homeland Security agents raided rapper and business mogul Sean Diddy Combs Los Angeles mansion as part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. The lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Jones claims Sean Diddy Combs uses affiliation with Prince Harry, along with other big name celebrities such as T.D. Jakes, to give himself and his associates legitimacy when throwing sex trafficking parties where sexual abuse allegedly occurred. The celebrities in Jones' lawsuit have not been named defendants in the sex trafficking case. Here is the here's the uh, the full list. Stevie J or Stephen Aaron Jordan, a producer and, and television personality. No idea who this is. Young Miami was not labeled as a celebrity in the filing. Um, I don't know who Young Miami is. Prince Terry, I know who that is. Uh, Georgia Mass Choir. I don't know if that's a person or a group of people, but apparently they were named. A Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian uh, billionaire whose name was also redacted, speculated to be Rihanna. Okay, speculated, so we don't know for sure. But was it was it Rihanna that gave like that super like occult satanic halftime performance at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago? So it wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah. Uh Donald Lawrence, songwriter and music producer. Never heard of Donald. Uh Cassie Ventura, I don't know who that is. The Clark sisters, I don't know who they are. Uh there's Bishop T D Jakes, um, the Forest Taylor. Smokey Norfol, Jose Cruz, Fahim Muhammad, and a redacted name of a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, allegedly Meek Mill. So what I'm learning here is it's it, it, there's quite a few people um, involved in, in all of this, or at least being named in this initial lawsuit. What I'm also learning is I am extremely disconnected from pop culture because i have no idea who the fuck any of these people are um so there's that uh all right so this is per newsweek among the benefits enjoyed by music industry parties jones lawyers claimed was affiliation and access to mr Combs' popularity the court filing seen by newsweek is alleged that uh, through his popularity combs associates gained access to celebrities such as famous athletes political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. Jakes is not accused of anything in the lawsuit, according to the court documents. Jones claims that Combs planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. The named celebrities have not been charged. Diddy has a long history of popping, uh, propping up Democrat candidates in election seasons, 
in 2004 uh, at the height of uh, his rap career, headed the campaign Vote or Die. I remember that. A political group aimed to get young people and minorities to vote. That's when they were trying to get uh, vote John Kerry in the office over uh, George W.'s second term. Um, that whole vote or die thing was was pretty hilarious. Uh, in the same year, did he interview uh, Hillary Clinton at the 2004 Democratic National Convention? Um, well, how long? Is We're this? not going to get into sophisticated. Yeah, I'll let you guys cringe for a minute. Why not? Sophisticated politics. We're going to talk about a problem that we have in 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 young America. Young Americans being disenfranchised. Only 36 percent of us have voted, and um, I wanted you to speak. You're some. You're, you're one of the few politicians that young people relate to, and we want to just hear the message on why you feel it's important for them to vote this year. Young people, that and, and please uh, um, talk to the people that are disenfranchised that don't believe in the power of their vote. Well, I really think that this year more than any other. Uh, young people have their entire futures at stake. Uh, when I go to the floor of the Senate to cast a vote, I'm casting a vote about what the economy is going to look like and what kind of jobs are going to be available, whether there's going to be health care, whether there's going to be good education. Every issue that you can imagine has a direct impact on how every young person watching is going to... That's all I can take. That's just all I can take. Her voice just eats me. So that oh. was... That was what was that 20, 20 that was like 20 years ago right 20 years ago okay as i was like it was like she looks like it's like 20 years like i'm like okay so that makes sense it was two decades yeah because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at the age of, of, Cl of clinton there i was like That's, that can't be yeah she she's not aged well since that point uh i'll say that but i remember that that 2004 election there the the they were like they were uh, trying to get anyone and everyone they could to get young people out to vote. I remember uh, being at Warp Tour that summer, and um, like two thirds of the bands were up there giving like political statements against George W. Bush. And granted, at the time, I didn't give a shit either way. I mean, I was I was sixteen years old, I think. Yeah, you and me, I think, are the same age, and like we were in high school in two thousand four, like. I graduated in 05 and I definitely yeah. remember the push for uh, Obama stuff. I remember like 2008, I remember in college, like projects where our teachers made in design school, our teachers made us do like public service designs for like getting young people to vote. And that was in the, the next election or well, when I was at RIT in 2011. So that, yeah, by the time, you know, this is back then, but it's weird. Diddy looks like the same, like maybe it's the sunglasses. I don't know, but um, yeah, the, you're right though. Her voice is so, blah, 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 and she's like trying to talk over the crowd. Um, those, those conventions too. I don't know if you guys have seen the last, last year's RNC convention, last year, the 2020 RNC convention was like a great production of like, you know, red, white, and blue America propaganda. I love it. Feed it to me. But the DNC one was the cringiest, worst political thing. Like, it, I can't even tell you how bad it is. If you guys go back and look at the videos, because they were they were doing everything remotely, and it was all masks, and it was all horrible. Like, it, it's a really good um, good laugh if you want to get it. Oh, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> it was like a it was like a three day long Zoom call. I think was the one. Yeah. Opinion. Uh, yeah. What would you say, Pinata? Whoever whoever scheduled the <laughs> seventy two hour Zoom call needs to be fired, or something like that, because it was <laughs> so bad and cringy. Uh, I don't. Know. I remember uh, I saying that. A, I thought you had a funny line, or maybe you retweeted. I saw you retweet somebody that had a funny line like that. I can't remember, but I mean that that convention had worse production value than this show. And that's saying something because this show is about as bad a production as you could get. Uh, so there you go. All right. Let's see. Oh my God. It might be worth the laugh. I'm going to drop a link. You, you don't even have to like play this whole thing. Just like, <laughs> just uh, a couple scrub through it a little bit. This and totally, I put it in our chat, totally encapsulates the vibe of what the best oh the left has to get their side fired up okay 
I remember this. This was this was ultimate cringe. You guys remember? You guys remember this? A man in a dress to 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 entertain the Democrats, of course. He looks like he's doing it at gunpoint, honestly. Like he doesn't look comfortable. He looks he looks terrified. Anyway. Yeah, I remember that. That that was incredibly cringy. Yeah, that was like their entire thing. And and we were like, we got this in the bag. I mean, the 20, if you guys remember, I'm sure you all watched our RNC. It was like back when it was after the impeachments had been won and like during the summer of love and everything seemed like all the players on the right seemed like very friendly to Trump and MAGA because they all wanted to get reelected. And, you know, if you didn't know any better, like me at the time and you had just joined, you thought you know, that the Republican Party had it going on. <laughs> but if anything, it was still the, the Americana, the spirit of like America first and and all the good stuff that we love about our country was on full display and they did an incredible job with the production. And then we're up against that. That it was like the best they could put together. And it, I, I think it's only gotten worse. Now they've got all these natural, you know, these disasters, Bidenomics, all, the border, everything else. Put that on top of the Biden years that we've seen. This is the best time to be on the right side of things. <laughs> Let me just leave it at that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it, I, I'll I'll admit too, you know, at that time, I thought it was in the bag too for Republicans. Like the Democrats looked so disorganized and they were just so cringy and looked so disconnected. And I felt like it was going to be a just a steamrolled election for Donald Trump. But I wasn't taking into account that not only did they have, you know, all that cringe and whatnot, but they also had uh, an army of ballot mules and drop boxes and Zucker bucks and mail-in votes and faulty uh, election machines and all kind of bullshit on their side as well. But <laughs> uh, for uh, Rai says, are the comments still on for that video? I don't know. I don't know. Let me reopen it and see. I can't imagine they would be. Yeah, they are. They are. Oh, shit. For a second, I thought this was a Dave Chappelle skit. Uh, is this guy Corn Pop? He doesn't look like a bad dude. <laughs> Stop, what? children. What's that sound? Uncle Joe's leg hair's going down. <laughs> oh, God. My, gr my, my granddad just came back from the dead to smash that dislike button. Pure cringe. Yeah, but then he voted for Biden, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Uh that reminds me of something my youth pastor would have made back in 2003. <laughs> Just imagine the entire conference room full of people that thought this was a good idea. 400 likes. <laughs> this is like something a right winger would make as a parody of the left. It's so <laughs> it's this, will grab us, it. this will grab us the youngster votes for sure. Oh my God. The amazing thing to me is someone actually played this in a board meeting and everyone in the room said, yes, this is exactly what we need. <laughs> the the Democrats have the entire rock music at their entirety of rock music at their disposal. And the best they could come up with is, quote, Count Chocula sings the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. These are, yeah. these are funny, man. If you guys are feeling down about some news, just leave this tab open, right? For your seriously, I'm I mean this when I say this. You have to balance out the 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 negative spiritual digital attacks in the news and the daily cycle with reading comment sections on videos like this because it will make you laugh, it will make you smile, and it will make you feel the majority reality that we really have that they're they're working day and night to convince you you don't have that majority. So, good medicine, good advice. This is so funny. <laughs> this was so bad it turned me pro war. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, like, yeah. it's great. We'll just spend the next hour and a half just reading these comments. Um that's good. That's good stuff. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, some of those comments are absolutely hysterical. <laughs> Joe Biden voted for Trump after seeing this. 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, all right, let's get let's get back to another uh, back to another story here. Uh, FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison for fraud. Uh, so a federal judge on March 28th sentenced FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed to 25 years in prison for defrauding investors of $8 billion via the fallen cryptocurrency exchange. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan handed down the sentence at a Manhattan court hearing after rejecting Mr. Bankman Freed's claim that FTX customers did not actually lose money and accusing him of lying during his trial testimony. In November 2023, jurors convicted Mr. Bankman Freed of all seven counts of conspiracy and fraud with government lawyers uh, charged him. Quote, he knew it was wrong, Judge Kaplan said of Mr. Bankman Freed before handing down the sentence. He knew it was criminal. He regrets that he made a very bad bet about the likelihood of getting caught, but he is not going to admit a thing, as is his right. The judge also ordered forfeiture of $11.2 billion, but did not order restitution, saying it would be impractical because there were so many victims. The judge uh, particularly took issue with Mr. Bankman Freed's lack of remorse. Earlier in the hearing, FTX founder wearing a beige short sleeve jail shirt apologized to investors. Quote, a lot of people feel really let down and they were very let down. And I'm sorry about that. He said, I'm sorry about what happened at every stage. Judge Kaplan said he had found that FTX customers lost $8 billion, that FTX's equity investors lost $1.7 billion, and that lenders to the uh, Almeida Research Hedge Fund Mr. Bankman Freed uh, founded lost $1.3 billion. Quote, the defendant's assertion that FTX customers and creditors will be paid in full is misleading. It is logically flawed. It is speculative, Judge Kaplan said. A thief who takes his loot to Las Vegas and successfully bets the stolen money is not entitled to a discount on the sentence by using his Las Vegas winnings to pay back what he stole. Mr. Bankman Freed and his attorneys have repeatedly argued that he didn't intentionally do anything wrong and that he deserves no more than six and a half years in jail. In his trial testimony in October 2023, Mr. Bankman Freed insisted that he use sophisticated analysis to try to keep track of the state of FTX's finances and suggested that subordinates acting without his knowledge or uh Impremature made costly mistakes, but prosecutors citing testimony from Almeida Research head Carolyn Ellison, who was at times romantically involved with Mr. Bankman Freed, vehemently disagreed with the more charitable view and were pressing for a sentence of half a century or longer. At the sentencing hearing, Mr. Bankman Freed's attorney, Mark uh, Mukasi, sought to portray the FTX founder as a well meaning, awkward math nerd. Quote, Sam was an incredibly kind-hearted and generous person, Mr. Mukasey, uh, Mercasey told the court, noting that Bankman Freed thought he could make his investors whole if he had more time. Prosecutors Nicholas Ruse countered telling the court the criminality here is massive in scale. It was pervasive in all aspects of the business. Sam Bankman Freed stole over $8 billion in customer money, and I emphasize stole because it was not a liquidity crisis or an act of mismanagement or poor oversight from the top. Mr. Bankman Freed has vowed to appeal his conviction and sentences. Sentencing. Um, we'll we'll leave that there, but it looks like a little bit of justice at least served. 25 years in prison for Sam Bankman Freed. And uh he is the biggest, I think, individual donor to the Democrat Party in history. And he propped up a lot of rhinos as well. Um yeah, he'll probably get out in like 15 or 12 or something. Um, but he might not eat, also might not because he um if he if he had been remorseful, if he had been like, all right, you caught me, I'm sorry, this was a horrible thing, like he probably would have gotten 20 or 15 or something and gotten out in 10. But this kid was like tampering with witnesses, he was trying to he was manipulative at every single stage of since he's been arrested until sentenced. He never once has shown a bit of remorse, a bit of self-reflection. Like he is psychological, pathological, triple, quadruple down on everything. Still says that he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, talk about like the the, the lack of humility, the hubris, the um, got that Hunter Biden thing going on where I I can't do anything wrong. I'm a Democrat. Like that entitlement thing. It really, and, and Judge Kaplan is no angel, trust me. He's not our friend, but I'm glad 
because they were looking for 50 years uh the prosecution and 25 is better than expected from judge kaplan this is the judge who threw out some of the the um virginia guffrey guffrey Jeffrey, so however you say her name he did throw out one of her cases i think i'm pretty sure or one that she was a part of and maybe she was still a jane doe at the time and he's involved in trump cases and he's not a friend but sliver of justice a sliver of like okay maybe we're still on planet earth just for a second yeah yeah i was glad i was glad to see um a substantial sentence for him it probably should be longer uh than than what he got but 25 years is no joke and uh, we'll see how much of that he actually serves and we'll see how the appeal the appeal goes but there you go um sam bankman breathe good pinata I gave it within the year, and he claims to be transgender just to get out of the male population, <laughs> of the prison population. If I if I ever get convicted of of a crime that would send me to prison, that's the first thing I'm doing is identifying as a woman immediately. Immediately, like, oh, all right, send me to female prison because I'm a woman now, and you're a bigot if you don't. Um, yeah, Judge Kaplan might be kind enough to oblige him with that being the crazy lefty that he is uh the judge threw out the case against prince andrew so this filter dog one judge kaplan okay so it wasn't it wasn't uh, um yeah that was that was virginia guffrey with prince andrew that's right yeah okay thank you filter dog uh all right let's uh let's move on to this here Mayorkas impeachment articles will be sent to the Senate on April 10th, according to uh, Mike Johnson. So the House of Representatives will send the articles of impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Senate on April 10th. House Speaker Mike Johnson has announced in a March 28th letter to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Mr. Johnson asked Mr. Schumer to schedule a trial expeditiously. Mr. Johnson wrote that Mr. Mayorkas refused to comply with the requirements of the immigration laws passed by Congress and directed through a series of memoranda, DHS employees to violate U.S. immigration laws. Mr. Johnson accused Mr. Mayorkas of having repeatedly lied to Congress and the American people about the scope of the border crisis and his role in it. Mr. Johnson said that there was a basis for the February impeachment as the framers of our Constitution gave Congress the authority uh, for scenarios where executive branch officials who are responsible for executing the laws passed by Congress flout the law substituting their own judgment for that of Congress. He called on the Senate to fulfill what he called called its constitutional obligation to hold a trial. It's expected that the Senate will dismiss the trial. Other members of Congress who signed on to the letter are House Homeland Security Committee Chairman Mark Green, House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman uh, Michael McCall, and Reps Andy Biggs, Clay Higgins, Ben Klein, Michael Guest, uh, Andrew Gar uh, Garbarino, MTG, August uh, Plugfer, or uh, Flugger, I don't know, Harriet Hagman and Laurel Lee. Mr. Mayorkas was only the second presidential cabinet member to be impeached in the last 236 year or in the 236 year history of the U.S. government. Mr. Mayorkas, who was appointed by President Joe Biden and confirmed by the Democratic Senate in 2021, was impeached on two counts uh, relating to his handling of the border crisis by a vote of 214 to 213 with all but three Republicans voting in favor and all Democrats opposing the action. The chamber burst into applause after the result was announced. Secretary of uh, War George Belknap uh, resigned in 1876 after the House passed five counts of impeachment against him. The Senate failed to convict Belknap, who was appointed by President Ulysses S. Grant. The House Action came exactly a week after the lower chamber of Congress failed to impeach the embattled Homeland uh, Security on a 215-215 vote. The tally was updated to 214 to 216 when Blake Moore uh, changed his vote to a no in a uh, parliamentary move to enable the House to reconsider the impeachment resolution. Uh, that gets into more background there. So anyway, they're going to send it up to the Senate in a couple of weeks. Um, what will happen from there? I don't expect much. I don't know why they're waiting until April to do it. This they're past... only waiting because they're on vacation. That's the Is only that reason. Why? Yeah, because okay. they come back on April 10th or something. So they'll take them over the next day or on that day. That's the only reason why they're not doing it sooner. Um, but what I think is they're gonna here's my prediction. There's gonna be a 
a motion to dismiss right away because they have to pretend to go through the process and then they'll dismiss it. Like there's no way they're going to let Democrats be the, the bear the brunt of the, the, the show trial that all of the evidence, they're not going to, they're not, they're not going to play games with this. They don't want to do that. Um, I don't think that impeaching him is really the goal or the answer. Like if, if those managers, those Congress people that, you know, have been going after this, what are that, what else are they supposed to do? We've got, you know, Democrats blocking everything that anything America first would want to happen in any direction. So they at least, I feel like it's worth it to expose while you're there. And then don't, don't promise the American people that you're going to get him removed or anything like that. And even if they did get him removed, A, he's illegitimately appointed. B, he's a criminal and should be, you know, thrown in prison for this stuff. But technically, I suppose if they did impeach and then remove him, he could be thrown in prison later on. That that's helps, you know, that it's worth doing. But they've exposed a lot of this. I think that this whole story has run its course because he's not uh, a legitimate president. He's He's, he's fake. He's not a real guy. So all of this has been sort of for, for narrative. And I don't want anybody to be like, oh, we can't get any, we can't even get a cabinet member. Like, don't expect it. It's really about exposing how that they're, how they're all criminals. Um, Joe Biden shouldn't even be president and impeachment of him or any of his cabinet is not for the actual purpose. Like they were trying to do against Trump. It's not the same thing. So yeah. Yep. No, I, I totally agree. You know, the end goal is just to it's it's a PR move to make the the administration look as bad and competent or corrupt as possible, which I'm all for. Uh, the Senate's not going to play along, though, for sure. I, I could see this being dismissed offhand. I don't I don't expect anything. Even if it were to go to trial, he would be acquitted. Uh, you need, I think, 67 votes to remove him, um, which would mean you would need all the Republicans to play ball. Good luck with that. And then about what 30 percent of the democrats or so to also play ball and uh that's just not realistic um not realistic at all but i do appreciate i do appreciate the effort um like i said nothing nothing's going to come of it unfortunately but it is it is it is nice to see them actually show a tiny bit of teeth even if it is more of a, a pr move than anything else so um, there you go. But we'll see what happens on April 10th. I'm sure we'll, we'll cover the story. All right. There's no, it, I don't even know if we're going to have an April 10th. Have you guys heard about this thing about the eclipse? Uh, the that's eclipse right. <laughs> well, that's, that's some weird stuff. They're treated they're like wanting to shut down stuff. And like, it's like, I, like, I get how it's going to be extremely distracting. And it's, it is for, uh, you know, I, but here in Texas, they're like, they're restricting like freight travel and weird things like that. What um, do you think that's about? I mean, obviously we've I, had I, eclipses and it's not going to be anything catastrophic. Well, do you think I, this is purely narrative? Because, or? Well, for our, I, there are other states that are experiencing it too, but I mean, it's, this is going to go right over Dallas and you're going to have the totality. Like, so it's going to be like, you know, don't look at it. But, you know, you could seriously hurt your eyes type. Of thing. So I don't know if it's part of that or, or what but uh or it's just to to avoid just just make just drawing serious attention to that so so people know what time of day it's going to be plan accordingly kind of thing i don't know I mean, they, there was one my... in 2017 right the last time and trump was in office and the trajectory was a little different i remember it went over like st louis like the whole middle of the country got it and it was a big deal they were promoting it they were talking about it it was a big deal trump had like this event but like none of the fear mongering, none of the have food and water, like what are they doing with this? It's very strange. Very, I, I kind of wish uh, I could ask TN what his prediction on that like move is because there's nothing dangerous about an eclipse. Are they just seeding the narrative so that everyone is more on edge about doomsday stuff in general? Are they going to do something cyber? Like well, I have no uh, crystal ball on this one. Like normally I can kind of guess for for what who benefits from these kind of narrative deployments this one I, i'm clueless i have no idea what they're doing with this stuff um very strange very just what, take note what day, what day is it supposed to happen i think the eighth the eighth I don't know. Let me look. okay yeah interesting I, the only thing i really saw was that cern was going to be like reactivating their particle collider or something like that on the same day 
which is interesting, I guess. Oh, my mom will be flying home on that day. I wonder if she'll be in the air, in the airplane during a, that might be pretty, pretty cool. I don't know. Or I just hope there's nothing wrong, like anything serious, any, uh, leave the world behind shit going on that day. I don't know, a little worried. Maybe she should stay an extra day. We'll see. Uh, um, all right, all right, guys. I gotta, I gotta jump out. I have, uh, I have Pinata Senior and Pinata Junior to entertain. So I will uh, catch you guys on Monday on this show at least, and then I'll, I'll be doing my thing tomorrow, four p.m. Eastern. So, hey man, we'll have a, we're gonna have go, a we're gonna go, we're gonna go do some, uh, some fun father son grandfather stuff. So we'll be uh, hitting golf balls and having fun. So we'll see you guys. Catch, uh, enjoy your weekend. Yeah, you have, you have a good awesome. video. Yeah, have enjoy. A we'll see you next week. Oh, there he goes. Drunk Pinati, guys. Make sure you go check out his channel on pill.net. Drunk Pinati does thinking logically from 2 to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, it'll make you crazy, but it'll also keep you informed. He goes through all of the mainstream, uh, not all of it, but he goes through a lot of mainstream media. Uh, breaks it down, kind of exposes the psyops and the, the gaslighting, the astroturfing, the word magic that they use. He, he he does it as well as anybody. So if you haven't checked it out, if you haven't made your way over there for one of his shows, I highly recommend you do at some point. It's it's definitely definitely worth the time and the frustration. And you will be frustrated. That I can promise you. It's uh <laughs> it's something else. Uh, um all right. John Stewart's New York penthouse sold for 829% above its assessed value. So comedian John Stewart addresses claims that compared uh, the sale of his New York apartment to Donald Trump's financial dealings following Monday's episode of The Daily Show, during which Mr. Stewart discussed the $454 million judgment against former President Donald Trump. In a legal maneuver initiated in September 2022, New York Attorney General Letitia James took legal action against Donald Trump, targeting not only the former president, but also his two adult sons, Donald Jr. and Eric, alongside the Trump Organization and two high-ranking executives, Alan Weisenberg and Jeffrey McC or Jeff McConney. Uh, Judge Arthur Engron, who presided over the proceedings, ruled that President Trump had artificially inflated his assets to secure more advantage uh, advantageous business loads. Subsequently, from the la late last year through early January, a trial unfolded to deliberate the extent of financial restitution demanded from the ex-president and his associates. Earlier this week, a five-judge panel, uh, blah, 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 they knocked it down to $175. During the Daily Show segment, uh, recent snippets from Fox News were played featuring several hosts and contributors downplaying the significance of Mr. Trump's New York civil fraud case. Mr. Stewart showed a recent CNN interview featuring Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, where the uh, Canadian entrepreneur voiced dissatisfaction with the ruling, stating it didn't sit well with the investment community. Quote, we're all going to ask each other who's next, Mr. O'Leary remarked in the footage, to which Mr. Stewart retorted, uh, who's next? the persecuted minority of the investment community. Following this, a series of Shark Tank clips rolled in showcasing Mr. O'Leary's criticism of entrepreneurs for potentially overvaluing their businesses. Avoiding taxes hurts all of us, Mr. Stewart lamented, adding that Donald Trump shenanigans cost the city of New York. In document uh, obtained by the New York Post, which was published following the show, Mr. Stewart's property history reveals that his New York City penthouse fetched a staggering 829% above its assessed value, although the exact property's asking price remains undisclosed for that time. Mr. Stewart concluded that the sale of his 6,280-square-foot 6, Tribeca duplex to financier uh, Parag Panday for $17.5 million the year 2014 records obtained by the Post show the property was valued at a mere $1.88 million. In response to the discovery, Mr. Stewart took to X, posting, oh my God, I've been caught doing something not remotely similar to Trump. He continued his post by listing accusations made against the former president. I guess all I need to do now is start a fraud college, steal classified documents, bankrupt casinos, pay hush money, grab pussies, discriminate in housing, cheat at golf, and foment insurrection, and you'll all and you'll revere me. Founder and CEO of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk, posted, quote, after railing against Trump's civil fraud case, it turns out John Stewart overvalued his own New York City home by 829%. People who live in overhaul glass houses shouldn't throw stones, John. 
quote, you reduced your taxes by using a lower assessment and sold at a much higher than assessed value. That's more That's more than not remotely similar. That's even worse, noted one user on X. However, others were quick to come to Mr. Stewart's defense. Quote, stop saying that John Stewart did the same thing as Trump, that Trump did when he overvalued his property. He did not, not even close. John Stewart simply sold his property for much more than it was assessed at. That's it, wrote political commentator Ed Krasenstein, of course, pointing out the differences in the situation. He continued his lengthy post by stating it's not fraud to sell property for more than the city says it's worth. It's fraud to knowingly inflate the value of your property on paper in order to maximize loans you could obtain, while also deflating the value in order to save money elsewhere. Additionally, going to bat for Mr. Stewart was author Seth Abramson. Uh, who posted, boy, I've hunted through this article and literally can't find any correlation between Stewart and Trump. None at all. Stewart sold a property for what someone was willing to pay and paid taxes based on assessor value. The Epoch Times was unable to reach Mr. Stewart for a statement. Requests for comment were not immediately returned by Comedy Central. So I like Charlie Kirk's uh, Those Who Live in um, Overvalued Stone House. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't understand. That's pretty funny, but again, it, it shows a two-tier justice system and just the overall, the overall unfairness to Donald Trump and anyone who supports him. And then that kind of leads into this one here. I'll do yeah. this, and then we'll go to our break. Uh, Trump case cast chill over New York investments. So behind the scenes, New York investors are silently hand wringing over the possible long-term effects of a judge's massive fraud ruling against. Uh, former President Donald Trump. Although investors won't publicly admit it, the case is having a chilling effect, said Charles uh, Trezinka, professor of finance at Indiana University, Bloomington. Quote, if you talk to people in this market, they are very, very upset. And these are people who are neutral or even opposed to Trump, Trezinka told the Epoch Times. They're just angry about it. Trezinka places students into the corporate lending market in New York, making him aware of trends there. On Monday, an appeals court's decision to slash the bond by 60% to 175 million still left the original history making judgment intact, while Trump continues a legal challenge of Arth Justice Arthur Engron's ruling last month. Engron ruled that Trump and his associates uh, overvalued their assets, but Drzinka said anyone who thinks Trump's activities in that case were irregular or fraudulent may lack an understanding of typical New York business transactions. A source familiar with the case explained to the Epoch Times that normally businesses uh, Business-related cases are handled in the New York Court's Commercial Division. New York Attorney General Letitia James found the novel way to use the state's anti-fraud law, and as a result, the case did not go the usual route to the Commercial Division. Their uh, cases are decided by judges who have specific, sophisticated knowledge of standard business practices. Uh, research examined an, uh, other New York alleged fraud cases over a 70-year period and found the Trump case stands alone. Trump organization was the only company that confronted uh, possibility being forced out of business despite having no proof of an obvious victim suffering major financial harm. As a result of that unusual use of the law, the case was channeled to a court that would rarely, if ever, handle business-related matters. Thus, the source said the case proceeded in just a highly irregular fashion from the start. And it gets into more and more. But the point is, is that um, they're alienating potential business and commerce in New York, further putting the state in, in harder and harder times. They're, they're going to absolutely collapse the state uh, and, and good for them, I guess. I mean, New York has been so far infiltrated and destroyed by this communist Marxist infiltration that it kind of I think it needs the bottom out before it gets any better. So they're just they're just uh, continuing down that path of, of their own destruction. So there you go. Um, any thoughts on that, Max, before we go to break? It's exactly what Trump tried to tell him. And Kevin O'Leary has been going on all the channels saying the same exact thing and play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, if even if they weren't doing all this with Trump, the rest of the policies in, in New York City, what they're doing to every business, small and big, and it's just how to destroy everything good for everyone as fast as possible uh, on a on a expedited, accelerated uh, timetable. I mean, race to the bottom. And 
I am glad that I moved out of that state because the entire upstate is held hostage to the whims of the, the communists in the city. And it, like so many states, like most states that have a, a city that's of any note, like that's how it goes. And your taxes are affected and the and your business policies are carried over because they're making decisions to govern the city and they apply to the whole state. So it, it's absolutely nonsensical um, and, and really sad. And I'm more upset even more so about the, the pizza oven thing, the... Um, the pizza oven, if you have a stone fired or coal fired, whatever pizza, like everything that makes New York pizza good now just went into effect. I'm sure you covered it last week that they, these poor businesses, if they survive COVID, now they have to put in a hundred thousand dollar air filtration system. If they want to stay in business, why just leave, just go to Florida and build a new stone oven pizza and make a million dollars selling New York pizza to New Yorkers in Florida. Cause that's what they're doing. And that's, what's going to work. So I'm telling you, yeah, all you people in New York, go find uh other other states there's a lot of red states that they, they make a lot of good food but good pizza is hard to come by i feel like the northeast makes like the best pizza um so take some of that new york style pizza around the country it'll be the best pizza place in town 90 percent of the places you go most likely you'll you'll be head and shoulders above many of them um at least from my experience, the, the further south or west you go, the shittier the pizza gets. Like it, it's it, true. It, yeah, so it's true. They don't know what they're doing out here. But like Chicago has a very own specific thing. But like everybody from New York has been fleeing to better places to live. And anybody who's left with their business, that you know, the New York thing, it's really sad. It's over. It's just over. And maybe it could come back in a while. But like, don't let it take you down with it. Like get out while you're still not killed by an illegal like uh, anyway just pray for new yorkers man it sucks absolutely all right well it is time to go exclusively over to pill.net for the second half of today's show i've put uh, a link to the um pill broadcast in both d live and rumble chats so make it really easy it's also in the rumble description beneath the stream so grab the link or just go to pill.net and find uh, 412 Productions. If you're on mobile, you'll see our thumbnail at the top of the screen with all the other live channels. If you're on desktop, we'll be on the left-hand side of the screen with all the other live channels. We are the black and gold. Again, 412 Productions thumbnail. So get on in there for the second half of the show. I'll play a quick video. We'll come back, say goodbye to the other platforms. Read your gold pill chats. We'll see what's new with Rise to Tire. Got some exciting stuff going on there. And uh, plenty of of news items and fun for the second half of today's show as well so we'll be right back pill.net is proud to host 412 productions exclusively on the true home of free speech to continue watching the show we are here to help you over to pilled if you're new to the platform just click on the welcome link provided it will then automatically walk you through signing up for your free account if you already have a Pill.net account, follow the link provided directing you straight to 412 Productions channel. We are excited to have you join the Pilled family. And if you have any questions at all, please email support at Pilled.net. Enjoy the rest of 412 Productions on Pilled.net. Free speech lives here. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Again, thank you so much for spending your Friday afternoon with us. We are about to go exclusively to pill.net. So it's your last chance to get on over there. Big thank you to everyone who is going to join us. We really appreciate you guys making the uh, little extra effort to watch the second half of the show. Those of you guys who will not be joining us, no worries. We appreciate you tuning in for the first half. I'll be back tomorrow at... Um, 10 a.m. Eastern time for a Saturday morning chat. Uh, so I hope to see you guys for that. And then we'll be back at 4 p.m. on Monday to kick off another week of deplorable discussions. Uh, so hop on over to Pilled. We've got another hour uh, to hang out here uh, on this Friday afternoon. If not, have a great uh, Friday, a great weekend, and we'll see you guys when we see you guys.